I'm Maggie from the blog backtothelandliving.com and in today's video I want to give you guys an update on our off-grid cabin build. And so we started building our off-grid cabin at the beginning of the summer and if you want to check out the plans for our cabin I'll leave a link to that video so that is my first video in the series of how we are building our off-grid cabin. But we started it all off at the beginning of the summer when the snow had left and the ground had dried up a bit and we first began with building our road that is behind me here and then we moved on to our foundation. So that's what I'm going to cover in today's video. So to start, we first had to build our road because we're down in the woods here at a site that has no power, no electricity, no other roads. We need to build our road through the woods. And so that first entailed cutting down the trees. So to do this, we just use our chainsaw and we cut down the trees, we fell them. So we built our road wide enough that we could get our trucks down in here with all of our supplies for building our cabin. So we took quite a while for us to fall all the trees as we worked our way at it. And then after the trees had all been cleared on this road, we then had to remove all of the stumps. So that required us to use the backhoe on our tractor. And what we did was we used the backhoe to pull out the stumps and then hauled them away. And then after all of the stumps had been removed, which took quite a while for us to do that process because our backhoe broke as that things like that happened. But eventually we got all the stumps out of the way on our road. And then we had to fill it in all the holes where the stumps had left. So we drug some big rocks down and put some rocks and things in the holes to help fill them up. And then we put down gravel. so we took quite a few loads of gravel to do our road and then we smoothed it all down with the tractor and our road was built, which took quite a little while, but we finally got it done and we were able to move on to building our cabin now that we could get down to it. So to build our cabin, the first step also was to clear the area where the cabin would be built. And so we had started that in the winter of last year. So this year required us to go back through, pull out the stumps again, and then um, level up the ground somewhat. We didn't have to have it too level because we were not putting it on a solid foundation. We we're putting it on posts. And so once the site was prepped and all of the ground was somewhat leveled, the roots were gone, the stumps were gone, we started with our foundation. If you watch my video with our cabin plans, I think I mentioned in that that our plan for the foundation was to put the house on screw piles, which are like metal rods that go down into the ground quite far, and there would be about 16 of them for our 600 square foot house, and that would hold the weight of the house since it's smaller, we wouldn't need to have a big solid foundation that would suffice, and it's often used for decks and things like that, but it was okay for this cabin. However, that was our plan. We had the road ready for the guy to come down with his equipment to put in the screw piles, but it didn't work out as we had planned. So the guy came, he was great. He went to drill the first screw pile and after about two and a half feet or three feet down, he hit a really big rock and he couldn't go any further. So he thought this might be the ledge, which would mean we couldn't do screw piles because the rods wouldn't be able to go deep enough in the ground to be solid enough or it was just a big rock and we'd have to move it. So he tried another one and same distance down, he hit the rock again. And so we realized that the ledge is not very far down. We were hoping it was gonna be far enough that we could put the screw piles in, but when my mom and dad built their house, which is on this property as well, just not in the woods, they also found that the ledge was really high up, their house is on a slab. And so we were hoping that down here, we thought the dirt was a bit deeper, the soil was deeper, but it turns out it's not. And so we had to abandon our first plan of putting in the screw piles and go to plan B, which was to do 
concrete footing tubes. And so I'd never heard of these before, but a friend of ours has a company here in New Brunswick that sells them. And they are these plastic big tubes that sit on top of the ledge in our case. And you fill them with concrete and that's what holds your house up. So like they're a form for the concrete, but they're actually made here in our province and they're made out of recycled plastic, which I really liked about that. And so we were really happy with how they've worked out so far. So what we did was we got, I think there's about 18 of them. And so we had to dig the holes of who where the screw piles were gonna go, we end up digging with a backhoe holes down to the ledge. And so since in New Brunswick here, the ground freezes in the winter, we had to be below the frost line, but we couldn't go any deeper than the ledge. So we went down to the ledge, and since the ledge won't be moved with a frost heave, we're good with that. So the footing tubes, we dug with a backhoe the hole and set the footing tubes on top of it. And then we filled back in around the footing tubes with the dirt that was from the hole so that they were all nice and firm. And then, since our ground was uneven, they weren't all level, and the sense of the ledge is uneven, we then took a transon tool, which was my grandfather's, and that just simply was able to make a straight line across them all. So we looked out through, and one person drew on all of the tubes where the level line was. So then we were able to, after we had that line on, we took a reciprocating saw and cut all the tops of the tubes off so that the house would then be flat when it sits on top of it. After the tubes, the tops of them had been all cut off, we took a cement mixer, mixed up our cement, and filled all the tubes with cement. So the cement mixing and pouring process was a bit labor intensive, but it actually turned out to be pretty good. So we mixed up all the cement. It only took us about a day or a day and a half to fill all the tubes with cement. Let it stay. Right. And the hole. were full of cement we leveled them off on top and let them harden before the cement dried for each of the pillars we took a piece of rebar and put it down into the cement in the center and left about a couple inches up and the reason we did that was so that the beams when we put them down for the base of the house had something to sit in and so we were going to drill holes up into the beams and put them on top of those pieces of rebar. So once the cement was a little bit dried, we could put the piece of rebar down in and then it wouldn't sink all the way and we could leave it stuck up a few inches and then we just let it dry and that, then it was ready for putting the beams on for the base of the house. So the styrofoam lays down pretty flat. You don't want a big air, you know, base under so it cracks. Around the base of each of the footing tubes, we put styrofoam insulation, and that's just to help keep the frost away from the base of the pillars. And we also, around all of the tubes, we laid a plastic barrier, and that was just to keep any weeds or anything from growing up underneath the house. And then we put some sand down. We just wanted to be able to keep things from growing underneath of our house and to keep it as clean and tidy as possible down there. And since we'll have to be going underneath there to insulate the bottom of the house, we want to just have it nice. So we put down a layer of plastic, like a thick plastic, and then we put down a layer of sand on top of that. And after the footing tubes had dried and the concrete was all dry, we were then ready to build our house. 
So we were actually pretty happy with how these flame tubes turned out. It was good to support a local New Brunswick company and product. It was also good that we were able to do the labor ourselves. So it would have been a lot faster if we hadn't been able to use the screw piles because the guy could have come in, used his machine, and put them all in one day. So it would have been much faster, but I was glad we had an option that worked out. And the price, I think, was about after all said and done with the sand and with the cement and the tubes, I think it worked out to be about $3,000 for our foundation, which for us is a great price. That would have been, is so much cheaper than it would have been to put a traditional slab or basement foundation in this would have been so much more expensive and since we're trying to do this as low budget but as possible since we're trying to build this house in cash we wanted to keep the cost down and just do the work ourselves and so this was a really great option I would highly recommend it if you're building a cabin to try doing um, footing tubes if you're looking for an option for a foundation they're cement so they're not gonna rot that's one thing we thought about doing some wood like posts, but we didn't like the idea of how there's a chance it could rot. I know you can dip them in some things and they probably would last for a long time and they'd probably be okay, but we just felt better about using cement for a nice strong foundation for our house and we were really happy with it. So if you have any more questions about our foundation and our footing tubes or what we did, you can leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to them. I really like them. Another great benefit of them was that we didn't have to bring any big machinery down. We, you could get a cement machine if you lived on a main street and the truck could get down there. It'd be a whole lot faster than mixing your own cement. But we couldn't bring a cement truck down here in the woods and so we just did it by hand and since it's a small house, it didn't take that long with many hands made light work. <laughs> so we are really appreciative of all the help we had. Eric's brother came and helped us on the cement day and my dad and my grandfather have helped us so much on this project and we really, really appreciate it. So now that our road is in and our foundation is in, we were able to start framing up our house. And so that is gonna be all in the next video. I'm gonna show you all how we have framed up our house and we are so happy we have it. Right now, since it is a little bit later that I'm filming this talking than all the work that we did for the foundation and the road, we actually have quite a bit of the framing done. So that will be coming here in a week or two about how we have framed up our off-grid cabin. And I'm super excited to show that to you. So if you want to see that video, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of when it comes out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Did I do it right? Yeah.